Hey guys, welcome back. So yesterday, if you didn't catch it, we rebuilt the turbo. And today we're gonna go ahead and install it. So let's get to that. Now all I want to do is just blow some air on there to make sure we got all that stuff really cleaned out before we put the new uh, donut gaskets in the new place and we attempt to uh, put the the new exhaust flange in. So anyways, let's go ahead and uh, grab that stuff. Now another thing to mention is uh, make sure that your exhaust, uh, your oil pipes are actually nice and round before you go ahead and put the uh, exhaust flange back on. If you see that they are kink kinked or whatever, bent, you don't have to worry. You might be able to get an exhaust uh, expander back in there to bring them back to uh, being round. And uh, I believe you can rent those from AutoZone or O'Reilly's uh, for free. So if you do have that problem, make sure you fix it before you go ahead and uh, put the exhaust flange back in its place. Now, we're actually in pretty good shape, so we're gonna leave this, so we're actually gonna leave it alone as it is. Go ahead and throw on the new donut gaskets and the exhaust flange. So now here we have our new uh, donut gaskets, brand new from Ford. And we'll just light them in place. And they should be good to go. you can see of what I'm actually doing but right now I'm trying to put all the uh, bolts <clears throat> uh, back in the exhaust back, back in the exhaust flange because as, as you can see it's already back in place now we just gotta slide all of our bolts back in it now the reason why I'm doing all this the way you're, you're seeing it right now is I think it's the easiest way now I might come back and uh, bite me in the you know what but i want to give it a try i haven't really seen uh any forum or no one really doing it the way that i'm doing it they usually drop the turbo and the pedestal as a one piece as an assembly but i think that i might be able to get it like this and the reason why i think that is because since my fuel bowl is out of the way i can actually reach down here and Damn it. Okay, so we fixed that mistake. Now we can continue with the rest of this install if you haven't seen any of my previous videos this is the turbo that i rebuilt it's the tp38 turbo that comes with these with, uh, with the trucks it's a stock turbo but there is quite a few modifications done to it basically the only stock part left to this thing is the compressor housing and bearing housing but that's new so what i've done to it is a new compressor wheel billet compressor wheel from kc turbos a uh, 360 degree thrust bearing upgrade to it and uh, also a 1.0 AR exhaust housing. And one of the coolest things that I've done is I threw in there a 300 S SXC wheel from Casey Turbos. It's a drop-in wheel. It's one of the it's one of their newest uh, products that they have for these trucks. So it's basically a so it's basically a 300 uh, SXC series turbine wheel designed to drop in to the tp38 tp38 turbos and it's it'll give you faster spool up cooler agts and just better performance all the way around and i haven't tried it yet but i'm really excited uh, to try it out so i can't really say if it works as, as uh, advertised but i think this turbo with all the upgrades that i have will sure 
performed great on this truck. I really can't wait to throw this thing in the truck. So let's go ahead and do that. I already installed the pedestal and I don't know how, it's, how that's gonna work out because I've never read someone doing it this way, but I figured that it'd be uh, easier doing it like this since I don't have my fuel bowl right here and I can access uh, the bottom of the bolts fairly easy. I'm gonna go ahead and do that because if you install the pedestal and the turbo all together, it's a pain to get to those two back bolts. Oh, by the way, this is a uh, deleted pedestal, which means that you don't have that cylinder back here that uh, back here that activates your exhaust back uh, exhaust valve. Because I'm gonna delete all that stuff, I don't really need it, and I don't want all this oil leaking to continue. But anyways, uh, back to this. With the turbo and the pedestal installed together, it's a pain to get to these two bolts on the back of the pedestal. So I feel that if I can manage to install these things in two, piece, uh, in two pieces, it'll work out much better. So hopefully it works out like I'm planning it. So basically, I'm gonna grab the turbo and install it. Okay, so I'm pretty much ready to uh, throw the turbo in here. I've got my uh, new exhaust gasket on the flange. I've got the pedestal all tight. Now one tip that I can get that I can give you if this does work out and you want to try it this way is you want to make sure that you put your two back bolts in before you put the pedestal. So you want to make sure that these two are in and when you tighten it you want to make sure that you hold them up a little bit because if you don't if you just let them drop and you tie and you tie in the pedestal uh, this this bolt right here will actually kind of get wedged and you won't be able to um, push it all the way through. So just make sure like I said that these two bolts are all the way up before you tie in your pedestal. Uh, these two front ones, you can actually just throw them in from the front, hopefully. Let's see if I can find the hole. So there's one, uh, if I can find it, I promise it works. Anyways, well, that just happened. <laughs> it's okay, it just it dropped to the ground. But anyways, you can see that you can access both of these uh, bolts from the front. But anyways, like I said, uh, we are pretty much ready to try and throw the bolt, uh, the turbo back on here. I'm really, really hoping that this works because I don't want to... I already went to, through the trouble of throwing this thing on here by itself and I really don't want to have to take it back out and install it with the turbo because like I said, it is a pain. But anyways, I'm going to grab that bolt that I just dropped, grab the turbo and throw everything on here. There's a few things that I got to do to the turbo before I throw it back in the truck. Mainly, I got to throw some new o-rings that i've had in the oil on it they sit in this little groove make sure that they're nice and flush uh not flush but nice and uh seated where they go there we go that feels pretty good and the last thing is that we gotta throw some uh fresh oil in there let's grab my rotel up I'm probably gonna make a mess but that's all right now, I'm not going to fill it up all the way, just because I know that a lot of it is just going to spill once I uh, flip it over to throw it on the truck. But, you do want to make sure that everything in there is coated with oil, because you don't want to fire up your truck with a dry turbo. You want to make sure that the turbo has some lubrication in there. Okay, guys. We're gonna take this thing and throw it back in the truck. It's, it's been a long time. Oh man. <sighs> oh, see, told you. No. No. I don't know how well Ah, oh, damn it. The O-ring came out. Okay, so I think this is going to be the hardest thing. Uh, making sure that the O-ring stay on the turbo when I flip it over and throw it on the truck. Uh, let me try it one more time. I think this might be the main reason why nobody really does it this way. Because it is a pain. To make sure that you're I know that right there my o-rings are in the thing is that I don't think 
my bolt holes are lining up. Not even close. Okay, let's see that. That looks pretty good. Hey, I got a bolt in. I got a bolt in. Yeah. That took forever. So now the important thing is going to be making sure... Okay, sorry about that. My uh, battery actually died. But anyways, we actually got the turbo in. It's on the pedestal solid. And it worked just like I wanted it to. I was able to drop the turbo onto the pedestal and slide it on the on the flange bolts and it worked perfectly. So now what I did is I reached under the turbo with this 10 mil ratchet, uh, ratcheting wrench that has a little bit of a uh, angle to it. So you can actually kind of grab it better from uh, underneath. The one that I used is a uh, Husky. So it's a 10 mil Husky and I believe that might be the part number right there. But yeah, this worked really good. I was able to get all four bolts with this uh, 10 mil wrench. So I was actually really happy about that because like I said, doing it this way, I was able to get the two back pedestal bolts that are usually really hard to get to uh, with the turbo off and then I dropped the turbo on, got those bolts, which was a lot easier to do those four bolts than the two bolts behind the turbo. Now, one thing that I got to tell you that you have to be really, really careful about, either if you do it this way or if you do both the turbo and the pedestal as an assembly, you really got to make sure that the O-rings don't come out of place. You have to be sure that the O-rings are in place because if those O-rings aren't exactly in place where they have to be, your turbo is going to leak oil and you don't want that. So make sure before you tie in the bolts, maybe snug them down a little bit. Go down here and make sure that it's tight, that there's no gaps around it. Make sure that you're not squeezing that uh, O-ring. Make sure that it's in its place in its groove where it's supposed to go. But anyways, this part is done. So now what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and go and go ahead and install the four uh, flange bolts. Get those tight. And I know these two bottom knots. They're going to give me trouble because they're those, those are the ones that I struggled with the most last time. But like I said, I got that universal socket, which should make the job a lot easier. But anyways, I'm going to stop mumbling and go ahead and get those four bolts. Okay, guys, so I actually can't believe this. I got those four flange bolts in in about 20 minutes, maybe 30. <laughs> but I got them in and I can't believe it. Last time those bolts took me literally a week to get out. And we had them out in, like I said, like at least within 30 minutes, I got those four bolts in and I don't know if it was because of the uh, smaller uh, 1.0 AR housing if that makes a difference if it's actually physically that much smaller that it uh, allowed my uh, universal socket to fit in there but we got it it's in there and to me that's the hardest part of taking out the turbo or I thought it was going to be the hardest part of installing it as well but I have it in and let me show you please the turbo is in I got those four bolts can't really see. Anyways, you've got those four bolts in. And all I did is I first threaded in those two top bolts and snug them down just until, you know, they barely got snug. I didn't get them tight at all. And then I put the nuts on the two bottom studs. And then you gotta, by hand, thread them all, all the way down until they hit the flange. Get them as tight as you can by hand. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow your universal socket to fit in there a lot easier and give you room to just get them tight with your ratchet and uh, that's pretty much all it takes but basically all you need is gonna be this right here a 15 mil universal socket so it's got a socket with universal joint already built in this tool will save your life if you're working with the 7.3 turbo I, th I tried crossfoot I tried Everything else, people said that you could modify a 15 mil wrench, but instead of you know wasting one of your perfectly good wrenches, unless you have a few laying around that you don't mind you know cutting one up, there's nothing better than buying more tools that can help you do the job. I'll leave a link down in the, down in the description to the ones that I bought, these exact ones, so you can get them. Another thing that helped is also this flex socket. And what this socket does is it allows your socket to also have a little bit of play at the head. So this will make, you know, all those really hard, hard to reach places a lot easier to get to because you don't have to be perfectly straight. 
And the cool thing about these is that if you click them in, they work just like a regular extension. So this is this was basically my setup. It was a 15 mil universal socket, a flex extension, and uh, all this stuff is I believe 3 8 So I also have a 3 8 half inch adapter with my half inch ratchet to really be able to really get those pull tight so that you don't have any exhaust leaks anywhere around your flange. But anyways, I can't believe that I have that done. That honestly takes a huge weight off my shoulders knowing that I have that. That I have the turbo in the valley and the turbo mounted to the exhaust flange. Oh, by the way, uh, before I forget, first of all, you don't have to even mess with the uh, exhaust flange. Uh, the only reason why I took it out was because I was gonna replace my donut gaskets because I had my uh, donut gaskets were leaking and uh, I had to replace them. But if your donut gaskets aren't leaking, don't even worry about it. Don't mess with the exhaust flange. Just leave it, at, leave it in place and you'll have four less bolts to uh, worry about and reach from under there because you can't get them from up here. You can get this one from up here, but that's about it. I'm talking way too much, I'm so excited. But anyways, I'm gonna go and get those four, four bolts done and we'll be done with this thing. Okay guys, we got this thing done. We got the outpipes tight and that is it. With the exception, with the, uh, exception of the EVPB, uh, because like I said, I don't have enough time to rebuild it right now. That just will be for the next video. But anyways, let me show you something. This thing is in and uh, the outpipes, a couple things. Uh, there's two ways you can do you can do this. One way is better than the other. The other bit, the other way is easier. The way that I did it was the easier easier way. And uh, what I did is that I took that same 10 mil ratcheting wrench, ratcheting wrench that I used on the uh, bottom of the pedestal to uh, turbo bolt on pretty much almost every bolt because I was able to get to it from on top and get it as tight as I could from on top because to get at these bolts from the bottom it's actually kind of a pain so that's why i tried doing that and i was able to get this bolt uh up here the same uh the bolt on the opposite side and this bolt right here the only one that was in it that, that i wasn't able to reach with that ratcheting wrench was the passenger side uh bottom a pipe bolt but that one i'll show you how i got it now, like I said, it's the easier way, I think, because you can get it from on top. If you can squeeze through your hands and, you're, and the wrench, uh, get enough in there. But I don't think you can get them as tight, so the up pipes might leak. And uh, before I drive it, I'm going to test all this stuff for leaks. And uh, if it is leaking, hopefully by then I'll have another hand to uh, help me get them from the bottom so I can really get them tight. And the reason why I think that it's harder to get them from the bottom... It's basically because it's basically impossible to put the socket on the bolt head from the bottom. It, it, I tried and I just could not do it. So that's why I came back up here and I got them with that ratcheting wrench. And uh, surprisingly, this one actually, well, let me show you. This is what I have. So that's about 20 some inches of extensions on my 10 inch, on my 10 mil uh, swivel socket. So you can kind of see, I'm sorry about this guys. So basically you're gonna squeeze your extensions between between um, your down pipe and your up and your up pipe and transmission. So kind of like the space between the up pipe, down pipe, and transmission, that's where you wanna uh, send your extensions through. And you just gotta poke at it until you uh, get the bolt. And uh, that's that's what I did. And uh, it worked out pretty good. But anyways, guys, uh, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. Uh, it's, it was a little long, and uh, I don't know if I got all my points across. So hopefully I did. But if I didn't, leave me a comment down below. And let me know what you want me to clarify a little bit more. And uh, I'll make sure to do that for you. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. And by the way, thank you so much. We're actually at 833 uh, subscribers as of right now. And I'm so happy, like, guys, I really can't tell you how much I appreciate um, all the support that I've been getting lately. The last video that I uploaded about the rebuild on the turbo, you guys killed it. You really, it seems like you really liked it. You killed it with the views and I'm super excited. And I can't wait to get this thing back on the road and really show you guys what it can do. But anyways, like again, thank you so much. Leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe and we'll see you for the next one.